So welcome to the Gamer Brew channel, everyone. I'm going to rank the 5th edition Player's Handbook classes and what I think are the best made and the most fun to play. So feel free to jump in, tell me why I'm wrong in the comments below. And let's do this. <laughs> yeah, I need a better intro, don't I, Reza? <laughs> All right, classes. Now, I think it's important to note that these are being ranked by design and fun factor and not by min-max capabilities. So if you're looking for like a power, power gamer set, this is not the tier for you. This is just me telling you what I think are the most fun classes to play and have the best... Uh, the best class design compared to the rest. Now the tough one, Warlock is S tier. Oh, you might not like what I have to say about Warlock. <laughs> it's okay. So this is not Unearthed Arcana, this is just purely from the Player's Handbook. But to throw the Rangers a bone, because the Ranger from the Player's Handbook is, as everyone knows, is not the best. We should put it in the, in the D slot. It has a lot of things that DMs sometimes overlook, like traversing. And if you're not doing like travel or doing campfire stuff, the Ranger is hit really hard by it. However... The Unearthed Arcana Ranger is much better. They get movement speed. They get bonus actions. Instead of having to cast a spell to do Hunter's Mark and things like that. So if this was the Unearthed Arcana Ranger, I'd put it at a C. But if it's the Player's Handbook one, I'd put it at a D. Rangers. It's tough. A tough life for the Ranger. Let's do Barbarian next. Barbarian. Oh, 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 oh. I put Barbarian as a B. Fun to play. Not overly fun to play. It has some good subclasses, some poor subclasses. I think most Barbarians typically go for the, the Totem Warrior. But you get what you pay for. Now the Barbarian does get Constitution saving throws. And I think classes that get con as one of their saving throws automatically makes them pretty good. Compared to some of the other ones. Dexterity being the other one that's pretty good. So if you get charisma or wisdom. Eh. But Barbarians get that con save. They're interesting. They have good lore behind them and such that I think they're easier to write backstories for. And that's why a lot of newer players kind of gravitate towards them. You know, you're a barbarian. You run up and you smash stuff. You see, you have a clan. Or you're a mercenary. So on and so forth. It's a barbarian, middle of the road. Not excellent, but not terrible. Jump to the other side. Let's do wizard. Wizard. I'm also putting wizard in the B slot. I think I might get some flack for this. Wizards offer a lot in terms of you can build them how you want. You can pick a school. You can go Abjuration Wizard. You can go Necromancy Wizard. And yeah. They, they're squishy in the beginning. At the end game, they get extremely powerful. They have the widest range of, of spells available compared to all the classes. But outside of just having lots of spells and a couple of things, I think they just fall a little middle of the pack here. They're a, they're a very vanilla but powerful spellcaster. Now that being said, you can build a wizard in a lot of ways. You can make them very interesting. What's up, Z? And you can... You can mold the wizard to fit your backstory. Alright, which class do you want to see next? I'll let, let's let chat decide which class is next. Z, I got a lot of house rules that I think you're going to be interested in. If you missed it earlier.
We all know where the bard goes? Bard is next. So bard... Bard is my favorite class in 5th edition and it is an S tier because bard is the shit. <laughs> now if you're a bard, not only do you have access to almost all the spells when you turn to 10th level, you can jump dip into any spell slot or any, any spell books from other casters. You have that, that rich lore. Contrary to everyone wanting to be a, a bar that seduces a dragon. There's much more to bars than just that. You can impact initiative at any time with your cutting words or your inspirations. Yeah, bards are pretty good. <laughs> like remember this is a this is a tier list based on what is what is fun and what is well made. And I think the inspiration and cutting words stuff is really well made. And then with that, bards are like a jack of all trades. Literally, they have a jack of all trades feature. Which lets you flex your muscles during role-playing parts too. So bard excellent in RP. And then excellent in combat. And I like stuff in combat to where you can hop in with the reactions. So Bard. Bard is one of my two S tier classes. Bard is amazing. All right, let's, let's mix it up a little bit here. Let's go Monk. Monk, 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 Monk. Monk is a C class for me. The Monk does what it does well. It is a class to where you can jump around the battlefield, spend your key points how you choose. The reason why I have Monk as a C tier though is they are very, very reliant on their key points. And many monks can blow through their key points very quickly. I don't think there's a lot of interesting subclasses that go along with the monk. I think most monks are kind of shoehorned into the same thing almost always. And while the class fantasy is there, from a backstory perspective, a lot of monks kind of fall into the same thing where it's I'm from a monastery, but I've been kicked out of my monastery, so now I travel the roads. Or I'm from the monastery. This is why I'm from the monastery. It's always about the monastery, which kind of shoehorns the monk into certain ways. So, monk... It's, it's alright. It does what it does, and it fits that fantasy of what it does, but... Compared to some of the other classes, it, it just lacks a little bit for me in terms of fun, being able to, like, interesting stuff. Now, if you want to run around the battlefield very fast and stand there with no armor or weapons, then that's the monk for you, for sure. But what good is getting a bunch of... Watching the barbarian get a two-handed legendary axe and then sweet armor for the fighter or a sweet shield for the, for the cleric or the monk is basically penalized for having any kind of, of cool stuff. Oh, okay, I see the, the chat's kind of spread it out a bit. You will be surprised. And feel free to tell me that you think the monk is better. But keep in mind that this is my thoughts on how fun and well designed the class is, not just necessarily how powerful the class is. <laughs> Next up, let's do Paladin. Paladin? Paladin? Paladin. I have Paladin as an A class. A Paladin for me is a very well made class that does what it's supposed to do very well. Auras, I think, are very interesting for a Paladin on what they want to choose. I think. Dump and Smite is a cool mechanic that Paladins can go after. Paladins really fit the, uh... Really fit what you think they are, and because you're a Paladin, the backstory ideals are, are very rich to, to pursue. You can be a good Paladin, a bad Paladin, an Oath Paladin. I just think Paladin as a class is a very well-made class for 5th edition. So he says that many classes will... Rip someone's leg off and beat another person death with it. <laughs> Barbarian. <laughs> so I think a paladin is very well made. I think paladin elves are very interesting. 
And I like their ores and their smiting capabilities. And I actually have Paladin ahead of Barbarian. Let you guys pick in which one you want to see next out of what's remaining. Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Rogue, Sorcerer, or Warlock. Rogue. Rogue. I also have an A. A couple reasons why the Rogue is an A for me. The class fantasy of the rogue, I think, is realized very well in 5th edition. You're from the shadows. You can build as a an assassin and do tons of damage out the rip if your party allows you to sneak up. You can build him as a, more of a trickster, like Mage Hand and other spells that help the trickster rogue out. The scoundrel idea for a rogue is very well, seen, or very well thought out in 5th edition, in my opinion. I like sneak attack as a mechanic. I like how they're skill whores, although not as to the extent of the bard. And I like how Rogue is able to pump out a ton of damage and fit that class fantasy as long as their their party allows them to, to go ahead and get that sneak attack off. I think it really fits what people think of when they want to play a Rogue. Because you know what you get into when you play a Rogue, right? You're going to do tons of damage, you're going to hide in the shadows, you're going to scout ahead and pick locks and, and search for traps and stuff. And the rogue does that really well. So rogue for me is an A. On the contrary to that, let's do warlock next. Warlock for me is a C. C tier for the warlock. And I have one major reason for, the, for warlock being a C tier. I think Warlock as a <laughs> Warlock as a role playing situation, Warlocks are excellent. You give yourself to a patron for your spells. You disrespect your patron, he can they just rip away your power from you. You can summon demons when you get to higher levels. The reason I have Warlock as a C is all they do is cast Eldritch Blast over and over and over and over and over again. And I think the Eldritch Invocations that come with the player's handbook are very... are not as well thought out as a lot of the expansion stuff. So for example, Warlocks in our campaign, they can grab a lot of different Eldritch Invocations that can help to enhance their character. Whereas the Warlock in the player's handbook, you're taking an Invocation first that adds your Charisma to your attack, right? And then you might take one that gives you a little more range to your attack. You're very limited based on how you want to build your Warlock based off of the player's handbook warlock and that's why i have it rated so low only because they're like an auto attack bot of eldritch blasts compared to like a wizard who has this mass ray spells or the sorcerer who can uh spell points in so the reason i have the warlocks so low and keep in mind that none of these classes are unplayable or bad in any way in fifth edition this is just my opinion on how fun they are to play and I think the warlock based on its little bit of limited abilities and having to always cast Eldritch Blast constantly even though the RP behind them is amazing the Eldritch Blast auto attack pushes it down next to the monk for me and into the C tier and that's why I have warlock a little bit lower but class fantasy wise warlocks are oops, amazing Yeah. It's definitely something that I, I try to make 5th edition content for to like make Warlocks a little more fun. Which is why there's the Hurrah Fair Warlock. Moon Lover donated $20. Great mapping, so detailed and helps me through the game. Thanks Moon Lover, appreciate that a lot. $20 tip. Thanks so much.
Set him with some Ruskos and some love and chat. Well, because Moon Lover tipped twenty dollars, I think uh, I think Druid should be next because that feels like a, a Moon Lover class, right? Druid for the Moon Lover. Druids for me are a A tier class, not quite S tier, but A tier. I have to pay respect for the Druid. Now, the reason the Druid's not an S tier is because they don't quite hit the, in my opinion, the accessibility of bards in my other S class. And by that I mean the classes that I put in the S tier are... They're so unique in their own ways. But Druid's Wild Shaping, I think, is an amazing extra. Able to spec a Druid into healing or damage. Or frontliner tank is also amazing. And there's no denying that the druid class flavor is there. Yeah, they are tree huggers. <laughs> you could build your druid circle of the moon. There's, there's so many ways to build a druid. It is a very well made class by Wizards of the Coast. And it is one that I don't think I've ever seen a campaign that doesn't have at least one druid in the game. Because that, that class fantasy is so strong with the druid. Who doesn't want to wild shape into a bear and run up and protect their friends or drop star falls or, or like moons on and moonbeams onto people? So Druid is an amazing class. It has a ton of accessibility. You could spec it a hundred different ways if you wanted to. It just falls just a little short of the S tier. I'd have it almost mid S and A, like in between higher than Paladin and the Rogue, but lower than the Bard and the other S class. But circles are very well, they're very diverse, they're awesome. The wildfire unearthed arcana circle is great. And I think making circles are one of the most enjoyable classes to design for. So druids are amazing. Druids are great. I think you guys know this isn't an S tier, so I'm going to do the fighter next. The fighter to me falls in the B tier next to the barbarian and the wizard. Fighters! Fighters get a lot of bad rap, because everyone makes fun of being a human fighter, as that's like the most vanilla Dungeons and Dragons clash you can be. But I think human fighters are great, and I think fighters are also amazing. They're the only class that can attack more times than any other class. They have a lot of... You could go champion if you're a newer player in the game, and you can learn it easier that way. You can go into Eldritch Knight. Eldritch Knight as a fighter is, I think, a very well done subclass and class for the fighter. Very interesting be a battle mage i think the fighters when you spec into uh the battle master for the maneuvers having those maneuvers is probably my favorite way to, to look at fighters i think the maneuvers add a, a ton to fighters but fighters for me is a a great class that fits D and fits middle of the road it's not it's not bad it's not amazing but it, it does what it, it needs to be, and it, it does it very, very well. So for me, if, if there was like a scale of all the stuff, Fighters is the center kind of focal point of all classes. So if you're above a Fighter, you're, you're good. If you're below a Fighter, you need some stuff. Fighter is the median of classes in Dungeons and Dragons. That is until I put out my, my Warlord Fighter, and then Fighters become S tier. <laughs> Alright, so what you got what do you think? What's the other S class? Do you think it's gonna be the cleric or think it's gonna be the sorcerer? Or all fair fighter? <laughs> think it's sorcerer for the S tier? Sorcerer, Rizzo's picking, now you think Rizzo's thinking Cleric now? I got a thing that said I might be going offline, so I paused for a second. Make sure I wasn't. Still here. Yeah. It scared me. 
So a sorcerer for me is A. Sorcerers are an A class for me. Sort of with the druid. Sorcerers, in my opinion, are one of the top three funnest classes to play. And it's almost an S tier. There's a couple limitations that keep it from the S tier. I think wild magic is an interesting subclass RP and perk or slash detrimental thing for the party. Having a roll in a D100 table from the player's handbook when you do wild magic stuff if your DM calls for it is a scary roll when you think that you might accidentally fireball somebody. Which happened in the Rise of Harlock game last game. You accidentally fireballed Gallus' character, Silas. The main reason that the sorcerer is an A tier, there's two reasons for me. One is the roleplay ability. Sorcerers are born or bred with innate magic that flows through their veins, opposite wizards who are learned magic. <laughs> They're trying to kill off Silas. <laughs> but the sorcerer has a lot of interesting, I think, roleplay abilities because they are born with their abilities. There's a lot of ways you can mold a backstory to fit a sorcerer. And then I think sorcerer points are one of the best design mechanics for classes in 5th edition. Sorcerer points to me are amazing having the ability to, to on the fly affect your spells in certain ways, make it twin spell, cast two spells, or make it a subtle spell, be able to cast a spell without even moving your mouth and like be very sneaky about it. And then empowering spells along with the sorcerer having a, the ability to pick a lot of spells almost rivaling the wizard but not quite sorcerer having both the the almost bag of tricks with their sorcerer points the interesting role play ability of backstories for the sorcerer and the the, uh, the list of spells that they can choose from puts them at an a class for me and they'd be they're right there with the druid as being a very well made class which puts the cleric next to the bard as the S tier classes clerics are just really really good <laughs> so cleric I think uh, the, so from a couple standpoints here the cleric as a role playing ability is, is top notch especially when you pair it to some of the the religions or even the Aranel religions and deities you can really fine tune how your cleric feels what your cleric is going on about you can build your cleric as a, a life cleric and be the best healer in the game. You have all the life spells. Giving hit points, giving temporary hit points. You're wearing plate armor as you do it, holding the shield. Then on the flip side of that, you can say, okay, I don't want to be the main healer. I want to be a good healer. I'm going to go forge. Now I'm a, I'm a cleric that can heal and I have a 24 armor class. And I'm, I'm going to tank and heal at the same time. The cleric just has... Is so universal and has so many variables that make it a great class but the cleric just has to be an s tier next to the bard it doesn't have the the role playing chops that a bard has but just in terms of what it can do during initiatives and what it can add to some story the cleric it just it just goes above and beyond for me as an s tier class So that's my ranking for 5th edition classes. Artificer would probably be in the B slot next to the Bar of Fighter and the Wizard. But I'm not as well versed in the Artificer as some other players are. And shameless plug, I'd probably put my Shaman class in the B tier too. And I made it that way on purpose. Didn't want it to be too powerful. But I think the Shaman fits in the B, B tier as well. But yeah, Bard and Cleric. Kings of 5th edition Ranger playing catch up but still there So this list is based on what I think is fun to play Oop, didn't mean to do that. And what I think is well made by class design Not necessarily what is the best class to be or multi class in Although it might be telling that the S tiers are both very good classes to multi class in too <laughs> For the universal appeal of both of them. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Close? What did I mess up on? Would you change any 
any of these classes to a different rank. Let me know in chat. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments. Next tier list we should do is gods and our affairs in S tier. <laughs> Dude, that'd be interesting to do a god tier list sometime or a race tier list. <laughs> but yeah, this is the fifth edition Bard Cleric. Amazing. A druid paladin rogue sorcerer not quite as good but still super fun to play barb fighter wizard the staples of any good party monks and warlocks have potential if you play them right they can be a lot of fun rangers play and catch up a bit although it has made strides recently if you missed out on anything that we talked about earlier and you're interested in what's coming for gaming brew in february check out our twitch vod there's house rules, there's new races, new sub-races, a new human ethnicity, and more. Hunters guilds, legendary creature hunts. Whole lot of stuff coming out this month. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Hope you guys had an amazing Saturday. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night. <laughs>